coming to you from these tables of liberty. On the program political discuss, we discuss major political happenings that transpired around Nigeria's political terrain. Sometimes we even go beyond the shores of the country to see what the major political happenings are. I am Abu Bakar Ahmed, and political discuss starts now. It is a tradition of the program to start with the political updates, and Aisha Mohammed Ahmed is ready to drive us on the segment. Stay with us. Hello, welcome to the news update on political discourse. I am Aisha Mohammed Ahmed. On the news update, Lagos State Governor Baba Jide Sonwolu on Monday in the preceding week at the State House allows her signed into law the prohibition to open cattle grazing bill 2021. The law seeks to prohibit open cattle grazing. The bill for Governor Sonwolu's assent to law. The bill was passed by the Assembly after it went through its public hearing stage, which received a resounding contributions and support from stakeholders. Speaker of the House Mudashiru Obasa during the plenary session described prohibition of open cattle grazing bill as timely and one that would ensure harmonious relationship between herders and farmers and protect the environment of the state and the southwest zone. However, the Secretary of Southwest Zone of Mir to Allah Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria, McBan, May Kudu Usman, had said at the one-day public hearing on the bill before its passage by the Assembly that banning open cattle grazing may give rise to tension and cost of cows in Lagos states. Governor Abdullahi Suley of Nusara State has assured the Progressive Consolidation Group PCG that Vice President Yemi Oshibajo is a sellable presidential aspirant if he chooses to contest the presidential elections in the 2023. Now he stated this when members of the political group paid him a courtesy visit in Lafayette on Monday. Suley thanked the group for the visit and for intimating him of the advocacy for the presidential candidature of Oshibanjo and their desire for him to succeed President Muhammadu Buhari in 2023 in order to consolidate on the achievement of the present administration. He then assured them that they had nothing to worry about if the vice president chose to contest the 2023 presidential election, saying Oshibanjo was a sellable candidate for the party whose antecedents as an astute politician speaks volumes. Speaking at the event, Dr. Ali Ukurfi, chairman of the group, said that though they came uh, on their own without the consent of the vice president, yet they were convinced to start the advocacy for Oshibajo to succeed Buhari, given his um, impressive vision for the country. He said the Vice President, if given the mandate to rule Nigeria, would ensure, among other things, that the rule of law was entrenched across country due to his background in the law profession. Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed, Director of Publicity and Advocacy of the Northern Elders Forum, has said that Nigeria's northern region won't play second fiddle to any other region ahead of the 2023 presidential election because the North has the numbers to produce a president. Hakim Baba Ahmed offered the remarks while delivering a keynote address at the Maiden Maitama Sule Lecture Series organized by the Students' Wing of the Coalition of Northern Groups at the Ahmed Bello University, Zaria. According to Hakim Baba Ahmed, the North will lead Nigeria the way it has before, whether we are president, president or vice president, as the region have the majority of the vote and democracy says vote whom you want. He further posited that why should the North accept a second class position when we know we can buy a form and contest for first class and win. He said that if majority of voters vote for a candidate from the north and he becomes the president and somebody doesn't want to leave under the Nigerian president, the person can leave. 
The House of Representatives has directed the Presidential Implementation Committee on Landed Properties to produce reports of all assets seized from late former Head of State General Sani Abacha and other Nigerian leaders. Chairman of the House Ad Hoc Committee on Abandoned Properties, Honorable Ademorim Kuye, issued a directive while interrogating the Executive Secretary of the Committee in Abuja. He said the House wanted a report on all assets seized from Nigerian leaders within and outside the country, particularly those belonging to late General Sani Abacha, as the committee equally picked holes in the sale of federal government assets held in trust by the Presidential Implementation Committee. He disclosed that some of the seized houses which the Presidential Implementation Committee claimed were vacant were still being occupied, directing the PIC to furnish the committee with an up-to-date report of the federal government assets sold amount realized from the sales, those yet to be sold, and those under litigation. Kuye also requested for the total amount remitted to the federal government from the sales with evidence of remittance according, adding that all assets pointed out to the committee but not included in, it, in its first report should be forwarded to the committee. Responding, the Executive Secretary of PIC, Malam Balasamid, Responding, the Executive Secretary of PIC, Malam Balasamid, stated that some of the people occupying government quarters had refused to vacate them. He explained that when the occupants were approached for payment or to vacate the houses, they went to court to obtain injunctions restraining the PIC. A combined team of military and uh, mobile police forces has reportedly neutralized 42 terrorists at Alawa community in Shiroru Axis of Niger State. It was gathered that the security operators laid ambush for the bandits who were fleeing the ongoing military operations in neighboring Zampara states. A source said during the ensuing gun duel, a soldier was killed while a few others sustained injuries. He said the troops got credible intelligence on the movement of bandits towards Alawa. Reports indicated that the neutralized bandits were escaping from military onslaughts in forests of neighboring Zampara and they were engaged at Manganda Junction. At least 42 bandits were reportedly killed as the rest escaped with serious wounds. Similarly, stakeholders in Shiroru are craving a permanent solution to the problem of escaping hoodlums in the area. Some community leaders said gunmen fleeing Zampara were seen on motorcycles hooded. A spokesperson for the Coalition of Shiroru Association, Silas Sabo, called on security agencies to swiftly intervene and give and save his people. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has said that it will display the details of the newly registered voters in the ongoing nationwide continuous voters registration, CVR. The National Commissioner and Chairman Information and Voter Education Committee, IVEC, Festus Okoye, said this on Monday in the preceding week in Abuja. He said that the first quarter of the exercise ended on Tuesday as fresh registrations hit 3 million. He recalled that uh, the Commission resumed the CVR on June 28 and has been given a weekly update apart from a detailed timetable indicating quarterly schedules for the exercise. He said that uh, the second quarter of the exercise would begin on October 4th and end on December 20th this year. And that's it on the political news update. It's over now to Abubakar Ahmed. Thank you, Aisha Muhammad Ahmed, for that political update. Recall our listener and viewer that last week we started Countdown to Nigeria's 61st Independence Anniversary, where we brought you discussion regarding the state of the economy in the last 61 years, the successes, as well as the challenges that characterize this milestone of ours. This evening, we will focus our attention on the civil service being the engine room for the implementation of government policies and programs. Of course, discussions like this requires the expertise of professionals and experts in the civil service sector of the country. This evening, we have the honor of hosting one of the longest serving head of civil service in the Kaduna State Civil Service, the former National Organizing Secretary of the PDP, that is the People's Democratic Party, 
in the person of Alaji Abu Bakar Mustafa, member of the National Institute, member of the Federal Republic. We will drive you down to uh, the conversation we had with our guests, Alaji Abu Bakar Mustafa, MNI, MFR, at his residence. Stay with us. Thank you very much, Abu Bakr. All right, uh, Alaji Abu Bakr Mustafa, let's start by having a feel of your assessment of the civil service in the last 61 years, and more specifically uh, in the last 22 years, being uh, you know, a system that the country has, has witnessed of an uninterrupted democratic uh, you know, governance. Mm -hmm. Well, just to say one or two things, we mentioned expert. In Kaduna said one of her people like Abbas Dabo Sambo, and uh, Abu Bakr Ladang, I will not accept that word expert. Uh, but thank you for the recognition. Uh, civil service, as you know it, uh, is seen as the engine room of any governmental setup. Uh, we have seen the post-colonial civil service. Uh, we have heard, we read, and uh, we witness the present uh, regime from 1999 to date. Uh, quite a lot of changes, modifications, reforms, and so on. All aiming at making it more effective, more efficient uh, in the area of delivery of services to the citizen. Uh, you can see surprisingly Abu Bakr uh, during military regime the civil service to a very large extent uh, had more autonomy less interference why I don't know but let me quickly say, uh, throughout my tenure, particularly during the administration of Ahmed Muhammad Makarifi, I got the least interference. He gave us free hand, so long as he is convinced we are doing what was right, following due process, adherent to the rules and regulations governing the service. Uh, to that, you can say my first statement that the civil service under military had less interference. But this is a position where I have witnessed personally as head of service for eight years under Makaripi. I will say, but for one or two occasions, he has never interfered with what we are doing as civil servants, under civil service. Uh, the main thing now is, whether we like it or not, uh, civil service is a reflection of the larger society. And you don't expect it to be different. Uh, of course, there are reward and punishment uh, systems in the civil service. Uh, then uh, we had what you call uh, ethics in the civil service. I, when we started, all what a civil servant wanted was to have house loan of say 40,000, vehicle loan, depending on if you are a degree holder during our time, it was 3,600 for brand new uh, vehicle. And if you are NCE, it was 2,200. And that was all we wanted because there was your tenure is guaranteed you know you are going to work for a number of years or your age if it reaches uh, 55 or 60 as the case may be. 
but things as they developed, that tenure has been eroded, has been scattered. People will just be dismissed, particularly, unfortunately, uh, during the regime of General Mortala. You will hear people are being dismissed with ignominy. So people start to say, ah, if we will be dismissed with the ignominy, unprepared, then the system is very unfair to us. And to my mind and to the mind of most of us, that what brought about in discipline and corruption in the civil service. Uh, since we have our rules and regulations governing punishment and reward, if that was, if it had been adhered to, you couldn't be just sending people away like that. At that time, you would be quarried one, two, three times. You would be warned before finally either uh, termination, retirement, dismissal would be taken against you. But this time, it's not the case. Uh, we hear so many things happening, some places, uh, retrenchment and so on and so forth. And this is not a pleasant development at all. Uh, how we wished that the good olden days would be back when checks and balances are there, when rules and regulations governing your conditions of service would also be adhered to. Let's look at another very controversial issue as far as the civil service in Nigeria is concerned, especially when we transited from military rule in 1990. In 2003, there was a judgment that was delivered by the Supreme Court that allowed civil servants to join political parties of their choice. And there, of course, impartiality is one of the tenets of the civil service. With this judgment delivered in 2003 that allows civil servants to join political parties and with this tenet of the civil service impartiality, where does it situate, you know, the impartiality tenet of the civil service? We are for it, we are civil servants are allowed to join parties at the address. Well, uh, Supreme Court is the highest court of the land. It has spoken and uh, that's that. Uh, however, I think the decision must be based on constitutional provision where rights of association are guaranteed. But you see, in practical terms, uh, this, this decision or this judgment or this ruling uh, are not being adhered to in some places. When it pleases the politician, they say, you should not participate in politics because maybe you don't belong to their party. But when it pleases, they oh, good enough, good enough, the Supreme Court has allowed that. Uh, sincerely, as, 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 as a person, I would have wanted the impartial neutral civil service where whoever comes you serve it faithfully objectively loyally without uh, having to be leaning towards one party or the other uh, and uh,